Church is about the priesthood of all believers. Yes, we have leaders. But everyone has a crucial role to play in the defining of the body as we release, as we bring into the presence of God. And this morning, we want to look at another aspect of our priestly ministry. We have a short time, but we, uh, by the grace of God, we will be able to finish it. Which I want us to, to take note of. In this case, we are talking about, and I think I did mention it last week, representing the people before God. Representing men before God, or the people before God. Our priestly role means we have to represent people before God. When you stand in the presence of God, you are not just standing for yourself, you are standing for others. And this is what we call the ministry of intercession. Representing others before God. It could be representing individual, it could be representing families. It could be representing your community. It could be representing your nation. It could be representing nations. But at least it there must be a people and we'll see who can we represent. And how do we do it? We'll just look as we read the scripture, you will see what that means. We represent people before God. If we truly know our role, we need to represent, stand for people in the presence of God. Now, Exodus 28. Let's start from Exodus 28. And this is how ministry of intercession is born. And honestly, we all can be intercessors. If we know what that means, and we'll see examples from the scripture, and it does not only bless us, it also improves our growth. It helps us to grow in our relationship with God. As we learn to represent order before God. And that's how the ministry of intercession is given back to. So turn with me, like I said, Exodus 28. You will see something about the priest there, and it will help us to understand this very well. And those of you who have been asking me about intercession, ministry of intercession, these are basic these are principles we have to know. And so, if we are there for time, to conserve time, can someone read for me from verse 28 of Exodus 28? Mm -hmm. Starting from verse 28. And they shall bind the breastplate by the rings thereof onto the rings of the earth. Read a bit louder, man. <coughs> Come on. Thank you. And they shall bind the Bind the breastplate by the rings thereof unto the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue, that it may be above the curious girdle of the ephod, and that the breastplate be not loosened from the ephod. And Aaron shall bear the name of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth in unto the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually. And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of the Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. Amen. Praise God. I hope we understand that in the cloth of the, of the priest, there is a place to put the breastplate. And in that place, the Aaron is meant to bear the names of the children of, you know, of these tribes of Israel will be inscribed on it. And that means when he goes, when he goes into the presence of the Lord, he's carrying in his heart the names 
of the different tribes of Israel, representing the people before God, said he would bear their judgment before the Lord. He will present their case. He will carry it in his heart because that is where burden is taken from. He will bear the burden for the people when he comes into the presence of the Lord. The priest's garment is not complete when he goes into the holy place if the breastplate is removed. It's not there. Does this make sense to us? He carries something. He didn't just go for himself. He's going, carrying something about others in his heart to present before the Lord. So he's representing the people, not just himself, but the people before God. And I want you to take note of that. The burden of the priest, not just about himself, it's not just about his family. It's about someone else. It's about all the people to whom he has a connection. That may be spiritual, that may be physical, but there's something in his heart concerning the people. A priest is not allowed to be selfish when he comes into the presence of God. And I want to ask all of us, when you go into the presence of God, who do you carry in your heart to God? I'm not talking about who you are grudging with in your heart. I'm talking about whose body do you, who, who do you carry burden for? to present in the presence of God. And that could be anybody. If we allow the Holy Spirit to inspire, to, to lead us, you will discover that God will always lay something in your heart for somebody. But we have developed a kind of selfishness in the church today that is, is all about me, it's all about me. You can claim every prophecy coming and things like that, but you don't even have someone you carry. Whose case do you carry to say, God, I want to present this matter to you on behalf of, that is what a priest does. Amen. And he said continually. Last week we were talking about this instrument I told you we will see, the Urim and the Tumim, mm -hmm. which we saw in Deuteronomy 33. The Urim and, is an instrument mm -hmm. for discerning the mind of God for people. Knowing the will of God for people. A people you don't have burden for, you will not know the mind of God for them. You cannot be a successful counselor as a priest when you don't carry burden in your heart for somebody. When what is touching somebody don't touch you, how do you expect God to come and gossip his mind for them to you? It doesn't happen. Are we, call, are we getting it now? Once in a while, you may, you may dream about somebody and go and share something with them and say, yeah, it blesses me. But really, even for God to come and reveal that to you, it shows that you must have had something in your heart concerning them. And you see how much God will begin to speak to us about people, about their needs, that they don't even know you are the one praying for. And the blessings of that is immeasurable. Because they may not even attribute it to you, and you don't need so, but God will bless you. Because that's a labor in the secret place. Let's break from selfishness. Let's be people who represent others before God. That's how we can be 
through men and women of prayer. That's how ministry of intercession is built. It's not just when we come together and say, let us pray for this person, it's good, but let's carry somebody in our heart. Let's be a burden for someone else. Is that point made? Let's look at the principle. Having understood that, let's go to Hebrews. The book of Hebrews chapter five. Hebrews chapter five. In Hebrews chapter five, someone else to be opening to that for me. In Hebrews chapter five, from verse one, you will see the principle of selection of the priest. And then you will understand one other point I'm going to make. The point we have made there is that we need to carry a burden for people before the Lord. The second point we are going to make here is, and that's how we can discern the will of God for them. We can know the mind of God concerning them. That's why the Holy Spirit can reveal something about them to us through the Urim and the Tumim, which is now actually the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Now, Hebrews chapter 5, and you will see something there. Yes? From Praise the Lord. Lord. Verses 1 to, uh, just read verses 1 to 5. I think that should be fine. 1 to 5. Praise. Go on, my sister. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God. Ah, I like your translation. Wait, wait, sister Flavia. I like your translation because I was still going to be explaining. But your translation says to represent the people in matters that concern God. Represent. I didn't know there was a trans- I didn't even see a translation like that, but I like that translation. Amen. To represent the people in matters concerning to God, concerning God rather. They are selected from among the people to represent the people. I will explain that first line later. But the word represent just caught my attention. Represent. You are chosen to be a priest, not just for yourself alone, but to represent someone else. Go on. To offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray since he himself is subject to weakness. Okay, so we are talking about even in a situation where somebody is going wrong, in a situation where somebody is going astray, in a, in a situation where somebody is caught in a, even in a sin, do we have something, do we kind of something as us to say, Lord, I plead on behalf of this, my brother. I plead on behalf of this, my sister. I plead for complete restoration. Or we are happy to just gossip about them. We are happy to be the one to throw the first stone, to cast the first stone at them. Or are we truly moved to say, Lord, this this cannot be. Lord, please have mercy here. You carry it. You carry it. Not just up, offering offering for sins of yourself, but some you need and say, God, for my sake, for the sake of the blood of your son Jesus Christ, you have to forgive this. Do the weaknesses of others touch us? Let's not talk talk about even, you know, uh, obvious sins. The shortcoming of others that you are saying, God, ah, why is this the case? Why is this person not growing? Ah, Every high priest is selected from among men to represent men. This is how we play church.
This is true spirituality. When last did you pray for somebody who you think is, is not measuring up to God's expectation for their life? I'm not, you are not judging, but in the body of your heart towards God, you can see it. God can reveal it to you. You can see it. It's obvious to you. That this is not what God, not the best that God has for this person. This person is not measuring up to divine expectation. When last did you cry for people like that in the presence of God? I say, Lord, please have mercy. This is what intercession is. Go on, Sister Flavia. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well for the sins of the people. Okay. So he knows that he himself is subject to weaknesses. You, only, you don't only just pray about your own weaknesses, you also pray concerning others. You don't only just repent for your own fault. When you, you do something wrong, can you also intercede for others that they may also receive restoration and forgiveness? Do you remember what happened to Peter? When Jesus had told him, say, you will deny me because of his, his, his pride, not listening to what Jesus was saying. He said, okay, you will deny me three times. Okay, he said, but I have prayed for you. When you are converted, remember your brothers. That's the responsibility. When you are converted, when you have repented and you are brought back, know that there are others who will, who will be in your own kind of situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. True Christianity. This is what brings humility before God. Are we getting this message this morning? Yes. If you are get, getting a wave of your hands at me, let me see your hands waved. Because God yes. is teaching us what it means to be truly spiritual. Let's go on now. And no one takes this honor on himself but he receives it when called by God, just as Aaron was. Okay, one, one minute. So no one takes this on. It's a great privilege. And I love that. And I like that privilege. Do you know that it is an honor for you to talk to God about somebody else? If we take this honor of standing for others, it's a great privilege. You remember in Job chapter, chapter 42? Go and look for the verses. I can't remember the verses now. When the, the three friends of Job, when God told them, he said, you have not spoken well at all. I'm going to deal with you. But you will need to go to Job and he will pray for you because I will hear him. You will need to go and make an offering. He will pray for you. And I, don't you think that's a great honor on, for Job to be able to pray for somebody else? You know, Job had just finished repenting for his own for his own misunderstanding of God. But even after he had repented, God now said, let others go and meet him so that I can pray for them. That's priestly ministry. A priestly assignment, honor of interceding for others before God, that God might receive their offering. Great honor. Nobody takes upon himself. If God says we are chosen, it is an honor placed on us by God. Can we see this privilege of intercession? Because that's exactly what God is teaching us this morning. The principle of intercession. That's why intercessors are the last to, you know, to gossip about anybody. They are the last to talk carelessly about anyone. They are the last to feel offended about anyone. 
May God teach us how to be great intercessors in Jesus' name. Amen. Am I saying they don't rebuke sin? They do. Oh, may God give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. When we come to the other aspect of it, you will understand what I'm talking about in that one. But the first thing is, do you even have God thing for people? Even when they are not doing well. Even when they have been caught in sin. No wonder we have seen so many cases of falls all over the place in the church of God. Because nobody is bearing anyone else before the Lord. We have all become very selfish. Finish it up. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest. No, he didn't. But God said to him, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Read verse 6, because that then ties into the priesthood. A son who is also a priest, yes? And he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Milk is is this past. Don't worry, it's a tongue twisting name. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So, if we also want to be priest according to the order of Christ, then this is what we should be doing. Let's take this honor of standing for the people very seriously. Great honor. Great privilege. And like I said, this can be for individuals and this can be for a nation. This can be for a community. This can be for a family. Depending on how big your heart is, how much of burden your heart can carry. Paul talked about the burden of churches, not just one church. You grow into that. Do you know that one man can stand for a whole nation? The burden of his heart. Turn with me. Now go back to see how we now want to look at the, the principle having been established. Let's now see in the next few minutes. If I extend by five minutes, just bear with me because of the time we have spent sharing together before now. So let's uh, turn now to just look at a few examples of men who bear orders before the Lord, who were able to bear orders before the Lord, who were able to bear burden for others. Exodus 32. This is for a whole nation going astray. In fact, the work that Moses was doing should have been done by Aaron. But Aaron himself had been caught in the, in the mess. In fact, Aaron was the cause of the problem. So Moses took it upon himself and said, Lord. So which means the priesthood we are talking about simply means it's not a title. It's just those who can recognize the place they occupy in the heart of God in standing in. Let's look at, at that again because of time. Uh, I will have someone to read for me uh, from verse 10, those who have not read before so that we all can share something together here from verse 10, Exodus 32 from verse 10. Quickly, and I'll ask you to stop when I feel you need to stop. Or jump if I want you to jump. Now, now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them. 
and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But stop, Moses... Stop there, stop there a little. You will continue now. Can you see that? So God was telling Moses on account of the golden calf, the idol they have made for themselves, said, Moses, leave me alone. In fact, that word alone, I mean, that leave me alone. I can, exp- I can do exposition on it for the rest of, of the day. <laughs> leave me alone. What does that tell you? Leave me alone. God telling Moses, leave me alone. What does that tell you? If God had gone ahead to deal with them while Moses was still there, God would have offended Moses. And God did not want to offend Moses. Hey, what a great honor. May we be such people honored in Jesus' name. Amen. Who God will say, ah, if not because of you. Do we still have men like that around? Do we still have people like that around? Who God, if not because of you, I will have death with this rebellious person or rebellious people. Let's go on. And God promised him, God said, let me deal with them, clear them off the planet Earth, and then I will make your own name great. Let's do a bad game. Moses, all I want to do will favor you. So I will deal with them, and I will make you great. What a great promise. I was just, I was just wondering. I said, ah, if I was Moses, what would I say? I said, God, it's a great idea. <laughs> at least it's not but it's not affecting me so let's go on lord but not an intercessor and i'm praying that we will not be selfish in jesus name we'll be a great people before god who will stand for others on whose account god can pardon on whose account God can forgive. On whose account God can deliver. On whose account God can preserve. Hallelujah. This is what intercession is. Go on. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. Lord, he said, Why? Should your anger burn against me, your people who, who whom your you brought out of Egypt with great power and might and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was it was with evil intent intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and wipe them for, off the face of the earth? Turn from uh, fierce, uh, fierce anger, re, relent, 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 and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your serv- your servant Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants numerous as the stars in the sky and i will give i will give your descendants all this land i promised them and it will be their inheritance forever then the lord then the lord relented related and did did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Praise God. I want you to go and read chapter 32, chapter 33, chapter 34. You will see the, the, until Moses secured complete pardon for them, he didn't leave God alone. God said, okay, 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 I've heard what you have said. Okay, you will take the people. I won't go with you. Go. And Moses waited. He went back again in prayer. No, 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 God, you can't still do that. Can you see, I will talk about the act of intercession later. I just want us to see our responsibility. Somebody standing between God and the people. Just representing, pleading the case of the people. At this point in time, the people didn't even know that he was pleading for them. 
He just heard from God. I said, God, don't do that. Don't, don't forget your covenant. Give God reasons why it was not a good idea. How can a man instruct God? But he carried the body. He carried something in the heart for the other people. We can't read all those other ones, but I'm just showing you tips as to what it means to represent the people before God. Your people. And they are Moses' people, but God's people as well. Your people, God. Because he has been chosen from among the people to represent the people. Several of us Let's take it to even several of us who have been brought out of certain places. How many times does it pain your heart to see the situation of the people, to see what the people are going through and say, God, you have to do something about this. This cannot happen. This cannot continue. I'm not even talking about those who have seen now. Do we carry something? Let's be a people who bear burden. Let's be burden bearers. This is a good burden to bear. Galatians chapter six. Because of my time, I'm jumping some other that I would have loved us to look at. Galatians chapter six. Uh, one minute. Okay, I'm there. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 to 2, um, yes, verses 1 to 2 we do because of time. Okay, I read it. Yes, my wife is reading. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, can, you, can, can I tell you? Can, can I can I then remind you? This is what it means to be you who say you are spiritual, you who are truly spiritual. This is what you should do. You should be true priests. Read it. Yes, yeah, you who are spiritual, what should you do? Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Yes. Considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Yes. Yeah, look at verse two. This is where. It, this is what it entails, yes? Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another burden. Bear burden for somebody else and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear burden for such people. Bear a burden for them. Bear somebody says burden. Share in somebody says burden. It's not necessarily about sin. It's about being burden bearers. A problem shared is a problem half solved. That's what people say, but sometimes it's not. It's a problem more compounded in the church of God because the problem becomes magnified more. The next person will hear it. The next person will hear it. And the other person will hear it. Rather than just, okay, I can bear, I can pray with you on that. I can agree with you on that. Count me in into that. When can we trust God to pray together into that? When can we pray? And sometimes we don't even be praying together into that. I will pray with you for that. The person may not even know that you have continued to pray for them in that direction. But that's true spirituality. God wants us to bear the burden for the people. You remember Daniel chapter 9? Go and read it. Write it down. Go and read it. Daniel was confessing his sin and the sin of the people. And you wonder, Daniel, you were not the one who committed this crime. Please. You know, but he knew what it means. He was representing the people. He said, I confess my sin and the sin of my fathers. We, are, we have been wicked. We have been treacherous. 
Lord, but you forgive us. You remember Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verses 12 to 14? If I shut the heavens and the earth does not, the heaven does not give rain because the people have sinned. So if my people that are called by my name, if my people, then it means if anybody called by the name of the Lord can, can be an intercessor. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I, the Lord, will respond, will heal their land. You know, these are principles of God because you have been called from among the people to represent the people. There's no situation we cannot change as a church of God when we become true burden bearers for our land, for our communities, so that on our account, God will say, I will do something. This is what God truly wants us to be in his presence. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. We can, we can, I can show you many more examples. Perhaps, I don't know whether that's the way God will lead us. Maybe on, fri- on Friday again, we may have to build on this if the Lord permits us to go that way. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's bow down our heads as we pray together. Let's just pray and say, Lord, I truly want to be a priest. I want to enter into this honor of being an intercessor. The honor of being somebody you can listen to concerning other people. The way you did for Moses, you did for Daniel. And the list continues. Paul says, since I heard of your faith, I never cease to pray for you so that you may grow. So that God may give you spirit of wisdom and of understanding in the knowledge of him. The eyes of understanding being illumined. So, these are men, they just pray. They carry somebody else. They bear burden for somebody else in their heart. They plead the case of others. Pray and say, Lord, deliver me from selfishness. Make me selfless. Make me a man who will not just be concerned about himself. A man, a woman who who knows his, his role as a priest and can pray for somebody else. Let me simplify it for those who may not have understood what I was saying. Let me be somebody who can genuinely pray for somebody else with concern, with compassion, with love in my heart. And let that start with all of us today, that each day you are not in the presence of God without mentioning somebody or some people or a group of people or a church. If we practice it, we will grow. We can change this nation. We can change this land. There's a movement God has laid on my heart. I've been praying for them. I've been praying for them. And there will be revival among them. God will be saving them one by one and they become missionaries to to that same group in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor this morning. We just pray that you pour upon us the spirit of grace and and of supplication to carry the the burden for others in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you because we know you will honor us because you have chosen us for this task. We know you will give us results. We will see great results in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Lord, we declare this assembly blessed 
in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Lord, this is a new month. We declare this month a blessed month for everyone in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Lord, we declare this month a month of testimony for every family, for everyone in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. A month of open doors of opportunity in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you. I will continue to pray your protection over everyone, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every family. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever we lay our hand upon this month, God will pray that it will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.